the country of Turkmenistan, and specifically its president, Gurbanguly Berdi Mohamedov. That, that is not to be confused with the Gurbanguly Berdi Mohamedov that you went to high school with, <laughs> or the one that was dating Taylor Swift over the summer. No, <laughs> we're talking about this Gurbanguly Berdi Mohamedov. He's actually been in the news a bit recently after rumours circulated that he died something his government pushed back on hard. First, insisting that he was merely on vacation, then releasing a 25-minute video to state TV showing everything he was supposedly doing, from bowling to working out with his friends to this. As we know, our dear leader is very skillful in controlling a sports car. He rode his powerful off-road car around the crater and demonstrated his high professional driving skills. Well, count me convinced. <laughs> That guy is clearly alive and well. You can't do donuts around a flaming pit if you're dead. Think about all the people who are dead right now. Babe Ruth, Galileo, Marlon Brando, Mother Teresa, the original Paul McCartney. Do you see any of them doing donuts around fire pits? Of course you don't. You have to be alive. Now, if Bernie Mohamedov looks a bit familiar at all to you, we've actually mentioned him before on this show during our segment on authoritarian governments last year when we showed you this clip of him being a literal strongman. I hate to say this to a fellow lifter, but that shit's weak, bro. <laughs> you did one rep and there weren't even weights on the bar. Even when I'm tapering, I stack more plate than an omakase. My, my body's stuck on beast mode and there's no off switch. You want to know how I got these two boulder shoulders? By putting in my time at my fortress of swolitude. I'm just, I'm just saying, bro, take notes, because I burst out of suits like I'm Meghan Markle. Ooh. <laughs> Boom. Kablowin. Kablowin. And look, make no mistake, Bernie Mohamedov is even worse at ruling a country than he is at pushing plate. He is a fierce authoritarian, and according to Human Rights Watch, Turkmenistan remains one of the world's most closed and oppressively governed countries, or, as one NGO researcher put it... I would say it's probably one of the worst places to live in the, in the world. Absolutely no freedom of the press, uh, absolutely no way you could voice any kind of opinion. Uh, it is still virtually a police state. One of the worst places on Earth. That is quite a claim, especially considering the Earth also includes Syria, North Korea and Twitter. <laughs> and, and it's not just a lack of freedom of speech. There have also been State Department reports of arbitrary arrest and detention, endemic corruption and forced labour. So he's a dangerous world leader. But that is not the reason that we're talking about him. After all, dangerous world leaders are currently a dime a dozen. It's just <laughs> one of the many things that makes being alive right now simply great. <laughs> no, what makes Bernie Mohamedov unique is that even among strongman dictators, he is truly, deeply and compellingly odd. So tonight, let's take a look at him. And while this story is going to get very weird, I promise you, in 20 minutes, you're not so much going to be wondering why we talked about Turkmenistan as why we'd ever talk about anything else ever again. <laughs> And let's start with the obvious autocrat stuff here. He's been running Turkmenistan for, for 12 years, and in his most recent election, he won with 98% of the vote. And like many autocrats, he's fond of showcasing his physical prowess, which you kind of already knew from watching him install a shower rod on hashtag arm day. <laughs> And there's just no shortage of videos online where you can see him firing weapons and throwing knives to impress his troops. But that is just the beginning, because Bernie Mohamedov takes those standard-issue cult of personality antics and does them just a little bit stranger. By shooting targets down while riding a bike, our great commander-in-chief once again demonstrated his physical readiness. This became a moment when our dear leader, who has high skills in every trade, demonstrated his level of masterfulness. Oh, yes! Total masterfulness. So watch out, enemies of Turkmenistan, because Bernie Mohamedov will not hesitate to slowly ride a bike near you <laughs> and shoot a gun in your general vicinity before an editor makes it look like he actually hit you. <laughs> but, but it is not just knife tossing and gun cycling. Bernie Mohamedov is also an artist, and his canvas is the human ear. He, he went viral last year with a rap video recorded with his grandson about the importance of sports called Sportly Turkmenistan. 
Smart and the help is inspiration. Makes body strong and strong all the nations. Gives you a joy and raise spirit high. Sports is the way to your healthy life. Ajayib Abada, Nuran Amekan. Hadar Tolkunari, Joshun Mukam. Abdul Uyar, Birji Wakan. Unga Dinga Unga, Jan Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan, Turkmenistan. Fire. <laughs> Everything about that video is perfect. From the fact that clearly neither of them are playing their instruments to the fact that they just rhymed Turkmenistan with Turkmenistan. <laughs> all in all, it is a fun, catchy sports anthem, truly worthy of Jock Jams Volume 40, Maybe Sports Suck. <laughs> but, but his musical talents don't just stop there. He also DJs, plays the piano, and is a guitarist who goes to great lengths to conceal his blistering chops. <laughs> Looks like he's playing a duet with the smoke monster from Lost. <laughs> that stage looks like the back entrance to a church after a French AA meeting. <laughs> so, so he's a strong man who likes DJing, rapping with his grandson and playing the guitar. But amazingly, we haven't even gotten to the truly weird stuff yet. Because <laughs> Bernie Mohamedov also likes horses. Like, a lot. Like, the incorrect amount. <laughs> like, to the extent that it distracts from everything he's done during his nearly 13-year presidency. Just think about how much Angela Merkel would have to like turtles for someone to go on TV and say, we don't have much time, so let's put aside everything she's ever done as Chancellor of Germany and let's focus on the turtle thing. <laughs> that is how much Bernie Mohamedov likes horses. And, and not just any horse. He's specifically a fan of the Ahal Teke, which, which isn't in itself unusual. It's a beloved national symbol in Turkmenistan. But not only does he give Ahal Tekes as gifts to other world leaders, he's written multiple books on horses, including The Horse, A Symbol of Faithfulness and Happiness, the Flight of the Celestial Raced Horses, and <laughs> Achalteke, Our Pride and Glory. Until recently, an official English-language copy of that book was actually available on Amazon, but unfortunately, there was only one copy. <laughs> and, it, and it appears that someone bought it, shipped it to New York, and put it under my desk. <laughs> because... Would you, would you like to hear my favourite passage from this book? B because it's this, and I quote, Witnesses never wearied of being astonished by the steed and human intercourse brought to full perfection, which I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping is a mistranslation, but probably isn't, because Berdy Mohamedov has involved himself in all stages of the horse life cycle. A few years ago, he awarded himself the title The People's Horse Breeder. He's also made it illegal to change an Achalteke's horse's name during its lifetime, and a few years ago issued a presidential decree instituting a tradition of beauty contests for horses, which is definitely odd, but at the same time, Time, you do have to admit, the Achalteke is a beautiful horse. I mean, that's a super fuckable horse right there. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying that I would fuck that horse. I'm just saying that if I was a horse, I would fuck that horse. <laughs> to, to be clear, me, John Oliver the human, would not fuck that horse. But John Oliver the horse would definitely fuck that horse. That's not weird. I'd be a horse. Horses fuck other horses all the time. That's how they make new horses. I guess what I'm saying is, if I was a horse and you said to me, fuck, marry, kill, Mustang, Achalteke, Clydesdale, no question in my horse mind, fuck the Achalteke, marry the Mustang, send the Clydesdale to the glue factory. But again, <laughs> only if I was a horse. Only if I was a horse. And look, admittedly, I've thought about this a lot, but definitely not as much as Gerben Gouli Birdie Mohamedov has. <laughs> Amazingly, he reportedly owns more than 600 Achaltekes, which is almost 10% of the world's total. He owns a plurality of them. That is objectively too many horses. Imagine owning 10% of the world's total of anything, and I say this as the owner of 100% of Amazon's inventory <laughs> of Achalteke, our pride and glory. Now, earlier this year, someone actually gave Bernie Mohamedov yet another one named Rowatch, and he was so excited that he wrote a poem about his new horse and read it on state TV. And this is real. You are the worship and memorabilia of ancestors. You are the passage of the past into tomorrow. Your neighing is the melody of heavens. Rowatch, you are the anthem of my heart. 
Wait. Just wait. Your neighing is the melody of heavens? Writing a fuck sonnet about a horse is weird. It strongly suggests that he'd like to have sex with that horse. But writing a fuck sonnet about a horse while sitting on a horse throne among horse-accented cabinetry, complemented by a horse statue, horseshoe, and custom desk inlaid with gold horses, that strongly suggests that he actually already did. <laughs> the point is, President Equus here likes horses, but do horses like him? The answer, and this is a direct quote, is nay. And... <laughs> and don't, don't just take that from me. Don't take that from me. Look, look at Rowatch's expression there. That's not so much an expression as a physical manifestation of the phrase, I can't even. <laughs> and this isn't even the first time a horse has seemed to have an issue with Bernie Mohamedov. Just watch what happened when he participated in a horse race in 2013. And before I show you this, I should say two things. First, remember, he runs a country where activists are disappeared in the prison system and which has hit the bottom of a number of human rights indexes. And second, the horse you're about to see was fine here. It was fine. So, with those two things in mind, watch this. <laughs> Again, the horse is alive and well. I can prove it to you. Here he is doing donuts around a fire pit. <laughs> you have to be alive to do that. Case closed. Now, 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 interestingly, when that race aired on TV in Turkmenistan, the footage cut off a split second before his fall. So, Bernie Mohamedov really didn't want people to see that footage. Specifically, this footage. <laughs> exactly. That's the footage <laughs> that he really didn't want people to see. In fact, he was so concerned that people might see it, journalists were apparently asked to erase all pictures and footage taken of the incident, and at the airport, officials conducted extra checks for fl uh, flash sticks and camera memory discs for any traces of the video. And look, I I I'm not going to show you that same video again. I mean, why would I, when I can instead show you a closer angle of the exact same incident? <laughs> again, the horse is fine and, this is true, a hero. So... <laughs> So, so, to summarise here, Turkmenistan's authoritarian president is a strongman slash DJ with a creepy, unreciprocated affection for horses. And that is where this story ends. Or, at least, it was going to, until we learned about one last bizarre obsession of his. And in, in the words of Turkmen airport officials inspecting the luggage of foreign journalists, we are going to have to unpack it. The president has a childlike obsession with collecting Guinness World Records. Ashgabat holds the record for highest density of buildings with white marble cladding. This tower won a world record for largest architectural image of a star. Again, a Guinness record for the hotly contested title of world's largest indoor Ferris wheel. OK, all right. First of all, the only thing worse than a Ferris wheel is an indoor Ferris wheel. <laughs> And second, the highest density of buildings with white marble cladding is just a pointless record. I, I get he clearly has an obsession with marble. The man even built a statue of himself on a golden horse atop a massive white marble cliff. But at some point, a record is so bizarrely specific, it ceases to be impressive. Like, largest bowl of goulash eaten while watching Frasier. Or, <laughs> world's tallest Ansel Elgort. Also, also, incidentally, the world's smallest Ansel Elgort. But, but the point is, during his tenure as president, Turkmenistan has aggressively set a number of Guinness records, including the world's highest number of fountain pools in a public space, the world's longest single-line bicycle parade, the world's largest horsehead statue, <laughs> of course, and, and the world's largest cycling awareness lesson. We actually found footage of him setting that record, and he seemed pretty psyched about his achievement. I would like to express my special appreciation to a representative of the Guinness Record Book for a certificate for the largest cycling awareness lesson. This respected award is another one into the collection of our country's Guinness records. Okay, okay, so, first of all, a cycling awareness lesson seems entirely unnecessary. Cycling is what you do when you want to lose a gunfight as slowly and as inaccurately as possible. <laughs> Who isn't aware of that by this point? 
But, but here is where the story is actually going to shift away from Turkmenistan for a minute, although I promise we will be back. Because at, at this point, we started wondering, what is an official from Guinness World Records doing in one of the most repressive countries on Earth certifying records for an autocrat? Because this is supposed to be the fun-loving company that certifies quirky records like, and these are real, most apples held in the mouth and cut by a chainsaw in one minute, <laughs> or oldest male stripper. It's, <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. But, but when we started looking into it, we discovered that in the last few years, a big chunk of Guinness World Records income now comes from helping companies and other clients invent and break new records to get publicity. Things like working with General Mills to set the record for world's longest line of tacos. Basically, that they can help design an event and even send an official adjudicator like the one you just saw to award the record on the spot. But that doesn't come cheap. For a full-service event, they reportedly charge anywhere from 12000 to over half a million dollars. And you might think, OK, but who gives a shit? <laughs> I'm not a nine-year-old waiting to testify in family courts. Why do I care about the Guinness Book of World Records? <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, it's not just companies. They also work with authoritarian governments, and Birdie Mohammadov isn't the only one. Uh, Guinness World Records has also sent adjudicators to Saudi Arabia to certify records like their world's largest flagpole and has repeatedly worked with the Dubai police force, helping them break 11 records, among them most consecutive formations formed by unmanned aerial vehicles. And if you're wondering what that even means, <laughs> here is what it looked like. All right, all right, all right. First, I would argue he could be slightly more impressed by that drone constellation of his own face. <laughs> Although I will say this, that might actually be the single most ethically defensible use of drones in the Middle East. <laughs> the whole point we're making here is authoritarians love getting Guinness World Records, and you can see why. They reinforce a cult of personality and confer a sense of legitimacy on a global stage. Which brings us back to Gerben Ghouli, Berdi Mohamedov, because he absolutely loves them. So if you wanted to hurt him, they'd actually be his weak point. The only question is, if you wanted to embarrass this particular human rights abusing horse fucker, what, <laughs> what, what record would hurt him the most? I mean, it'd have to involve some of his favourite things, wouldn't it? Like horses and white marble, <laughs> and also include a humiliating moment that he didn't want people to know about. So, <laughs> hypothetically, if you could make the world's largest marble cake, featuring the image of him falling off a horse, <laughs> that would check all of the boxes there, right? I mean, of course, it wouldn't be easy, would it? The, the current record for largest marble cake is around 160 square feet, <laughs> set by Betty Crocker in where else but Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Also, you'd ideally want an official adjudicator to come and certify the cake immediately. <laughs> and unfortunately, here is where I do have some bad news. Because we actually planned to bake a 600-square-foot cake that would make Betty Crocker's look like a fucking mouse twinkie. <laughs> but, but when we reached out to Guinness World Records and we asked them to send someone, they declined, saying, and I quote, Unfortunately, because our brand is aligned with kids and families, this record attempt is not one that we will be able to provide an adjudicator for. Which is... Yeah, it's a real shame. I guess we just don't run a brutal enough dictatorship to meet <laughs> Guinness World Records' high ethical standards. <laughs> although... Although they... They did say that, that if we fully documented making the cake, they might certify us after the fact. Unfortunately, they wanted us to sign an agreement that could have prevented us from criticising them in this story, which is clearly ridiculous. But then it hit us. We don't need Guinness World Records to make a world record-sized cake. And if we did, not only would we be annoying an authoritarian leader, we'd also now be annoying these guys. So... <laughs> so did we bake it? I mean, I guess I really only have two questions for you at this point. One... Are you ready to make history? And two, <laughs> who wants some fucking cake? <laughs> because, behold, this monstrous folly. I told you things were going to get weird tonight, didn't I? Admit it. When I said earlier,
here. Our main story concerns Turkmenistan. You did not expect the show to end 20 minutes later with me standing next to the world's largest marble cake depicting a guy falling off a horse. Yet here we are. I have some good news. Everyone in this audience is going to get some cake to take home tonight. And the rest of this magnificent frosted beast will be donated to City Harvest. We did it, guys. We did it. We did it. Clap for me, cyclists. Clap for me now. That's our show. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. Good night.